Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker, this is Sporting Logically, and today we are once again talking about role players, but more specifically, we're talking about their salaries. As a result of a huge increase in the salary cap the past few off seasons, there are a number of players that happen to get a much bigger contract than they would have otherwise, simply because they became a free agent in an off season in which so many teams had money to spend. As a result, there are a good amount of players that aren't considered stars in the league, but still make more money than those much more impactful players across the NBA. That isn't to say that these players are bad by any means, as many of them are very valuable and productive. It is simply very surprising to see what star players across the league at their same position make much less money than they do. As with my other videos dealing with player salaries, I'm using this page on ESPN.com, which shows numbers for this season only, not the entire life of their current contract. Let's get started. Number 1. Both Paul George and Jimmy Butler are now playoff bound after last night's results and are clearly two of the best wings in the league. George signed his current deal as an extension to his rookie contract in 2013, while Butler re-signed with the Bulls after his rookie deal expired in 2015 before being traded to the Wolves this past offseason. Because they signed their deals in what seems like forever ago in terms of the NBA salary cap, neither of them place in the top 35 in the league in salary for this season despite their standing as surely one of the top 35 players in the league. And this is the part where it becomes clear about what I mean about a player becoming a free agent in the best offseason possible in terms of salary cap space available. After trading for Nicholas Batum in 2015, the Hornets were in a tough spot when his contract expired in the infamous summer of 2016. They didn't want to lose him for nothing so soon after trading for him, and he was one of the more important pieces on the roster. As a result, they were almost forced to sign him to a max contract, despite not being a player of the caliber you would normally associate with such a high salary. That isn't to say that Batum isn't a solid NBA player, but he has had some injury struggles in the midst of a down year this season with Charlotte, further showing that there's no reason for him to be making more on a yearly basis than either George or Butler. I bet Paul George can't wait for free agency this summer because the man is about to get paid. As for where he signs, that's for a different video altogether. Number 2. Former most improved player and the well-known owner of the flamethrower from deep and turnstile on defense game combo, Ryan Anderson signed a deal with the perfect team for his talents in the three-point obsessed Houston Rockets in, of course, the summer of 2016. Despite a downturn in his per-game numbers this season, Anderson has still been a valuable part of the Rockets' buzzsaw, though it remains to be seen how much the coaching staff will use his defensive lacking talents once the playoffs come around. The deal that Anderson signed that summer puts him in the top 40 of player salaries, eight spots ahead of arguably one of the most talented and impactful big men the modern NBA has ever seen, DeMarcus Cousins. Boogie signed an extension to his rookie contract in 2013, a four-year $62 million pack that seems remarkably cheap relative to today's salaries. Again, timing is everything. But just like George previously, Cousins won't have to wait too much longer to see his name near the top of the NBA salaries list. With his pending free agency this offseason, he's a surefire max contract player, likely to stay with the Pelicans in my opinion. Again, no offense to former net Ryan Anderson, having his shooting ability at his size is a luxury a ton of teams would love to employ, but he has no business making more than Boogie. Number 3. Former Cav Kyrie Irving, get well soon please the league misses you, and everybody eats detractor John Wall are clearly two of the best point guards in the league though you can argue all you want about their order among the league's top lead guards if you like. However, as John Wall has been all too quick to point out in the past, there are players at their position that really shouldn't be ahead of these guys in terms of yearly salary. One of those is former King and current Cav George Hill, who was signed as a part of a overpay veterans when we really should be getting our young players as much run as possible free agency class in Sacramento this past offseason, along with Zach Randolph and Vince Carter. No offense Vince, you're still my guy, run it back for one more season, please. That deal puts Hill ahead of every other player on this list in terms of salary except for Nick Batum, while Irving and Wall sit at 45th and 46th respectively. That changes for Wall in 2019, however, as that is when his current rookie deal extension runs out and his new Supermax deal kicks in. Irving's deal also bumps him up in salary next season, while Hill's actually decreases, so neither of these guys will be eligible for this spot on the list this time next season. But as it stands now, George Hill is the proud owner of a salary that outpaces two All-NBA guards for this season. Number 4. In the summer of 2015, Wesley Matthews signed a four-year deal with the Dallas Mavericks that places him in the top 50 of player salaries for this season. Matthews is a great three-point shooter and solid defender, 
that has had a promising recovery from a torn Achilles injury that normally spells the end of a career for players as old as Matthews was at the time he got hurt. One spot below him in terms of salary at the 50th spot is Warrior sharpshooter Clay Thompson, who signed a four-year rookie contract extension in 2014. I specifically remember getting the notification on my phone when Thompson signed the deal and honestly thinking at the time that that is a lot of money for him. Eight months later, the Warriors won the NBA championship to spark one of the more dominant three-year runs the league has ever seen, so I'll admit that my initial reaction to the deal was incorrect. Though the difference in salary is pretty small, it is still strange to see a player as impactful as Thompson relatively far down the salaries list across the league. Clay doesn't become a free agent until the summer of 2019, an offseason that many people have circled as one that might end the current Warriors core as we know it today. When you look at the numbers, without some serious salary cap gymnastics by the front office in Golden State or a hefty hometown discount, the collection of talent they have built is unsustainable beyond that offseason. But regardless of which team Clay plays for, he will surely be signed to a max deal somewhere, putting him rightfully near the top of the league's salaries hierarchy. Thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, then leaving a like rating is a great way to let me know. And if you'd like to see more videos just like this, then be sure to subscribe to Sporting Logically for more videos every single week. Thank you all so much, and I will see all of you next time.